Hope everybody's staying dry today. Uh, it's it's Saturday and it's rained probably three quarters to an inch already. It's supposed to clear out of here by noon. Um, we're just pulling in right now to feed group four. See how hard it's raining. and getting the gates ready some rain suit soaked and I got my right arm soaked I don't know why my right arm soaked anyway. so that's what's going on right now uh, we'll just see what happens for the rest of the day what comes up Getting some really bad spots on the lane, so we may be doing some lane work this afternoon. And uh, I need to, I need to get the commodity barn all straightened up for uh, a load of cotton seed coming Monday. Going back to start feeding cotton seed again, and uh, some stuff like that. So we'll, uh, so we'll see you when the next thing comes up. Well, we're about to run group three's feet off now. Uh, I took my rain suit off because I was tired of wearing it, and uh, it probably weighed like 100 pounds. Uh, as soon as I took it off, it, it started kind of sprinkling again, but I ain't worried about it. I did just get wet like on my sleeves, and uh, everything else is pretty dry. I think my neck is kind of wet, but whatever. So we'll get this feet put out, and then we're gonna go. Um, Then we're gonna go uh, do some stuff in the commodity barn. I got uh, five uh, totes of mineral yesterday, a milk cow mineral, and then I got, uh, uh, well, I already kind of put that one up, but a uh, ton of heifer mineral. And I just set them in the commodity barn, and then I, I need to get it all straightened up where so we can get that load of cotton seed and coming Monday. So that's what we're gonna do next. Well, I picked up rain again. You can see the drops. But uh, right now I'm just I'm sitting in a 6410. I got the pallet forks on. I'm here at the commodity barn, and I'm trying to figure out how to uh, trying to figure out how to uh, put a, a I think 11 or maybe 12 different ingredients in a four bay commodity barn. So, we got corn, corn gluten, soy holes, DDG, soybean meal, cotton seeds common, milk cow mineral, heifer mineral, calf mineral, calf feed, the baleage, and we're about to start feeding the new baleage, and mixed in with, uh, I got about 10 days, no, I got probably like 8 to 9 days left of baleage uh, from last year. So we're gonna start mixing in the new stuff with it to stretch out the old stuff, and uh, and then so it's not a dramatic change because they're gonna be going from about 11 to 12 percent protein to 16, 18 percent protein on the forage. So we're gonna try to transition over into the new stuff. Um, so you know, I got the pad. Well, the windows are kind of fogging up, but I got the pad over there where we put the baleage, and I can keep two different baleages separate and uh, and feed them out that way then I got four bays for everything else so that's ten, ten ingredients and four bays and then the three-way mix I uh, figured out the other day when we first started getting the three-way mix it didn't cost us anything to mix it they were just doing it and then uh, a few months after that they started charging like five ten dollars a ton not a big deal. Um, it was still worth it. And then figured out uh, 
figured out last into last week that um, they're charging us about $35 to $40 a ton now to mix it. So that is not uh, cool because that's like $800 to $900 a week just for them to mix it. So if we could save that and we could build a new commodity barn in six months. So, or maybe not quite, but. Uh, so I'm trying to get it figured, I'm trying to get a handle on that, how I can get a load of each ingredient and mix it ourselves. Um, I haven't quite figured that out yet. But right now I'm just trying to figure out how to get this bay empty for the load of cotton seed that's coming in a couple days. Uh, and then I could just wait till tomorrow, but I need to get mineral for the milk cows because I have maybe just enough for this afternoon. I don't have nothing for tomorrow. I actually shorted them this morning, so um, I need to get this all lined up and situated. All right, well, those totes on the pallet, uh, they weigh a ton of piece. That's the milk cow mineral. And then um, I, I had half a half a pallet of calf heat mineral that I moved over with the heifer mineral in front of the three-way mix. Right there. And there was two sacks left of heifer mineral. I just threw them on top. I take the bucket over here and I'll push them over out of the way. And then that's 10,000 pounds of milk cow mineral. Uh, what my plan is, I'm gonna get all this cleaned up. That's trash, that's leftover dry cow mineral. And um, the leftover dry cow mineral, I don't have any dry cows right now, so probably gonna find a place to shove that in the old barn under what's left of the roof. I'm gonna get this mineral cleaned up uh, for the, tonight and probably tomorrow morning's feeding. Cotton seed comes and then I'll dump either a tote or maybe two totes of the milk cow out here in front. But I don't, I don't want to do it now, so that way when they unload the cotton seed, I imagine he's gonna drag it all the way out to the roof, and then that way I can come in and push it and shove it all the way up, you know, and fill it up from wall to wall, all the way around the top. And then that'll give me room to put my milk cow mineral right here. So, that's the plan. I had to go check for heat now in group four, and then I'll get to mixing that feed for tonight. It is 3 o'clock now in the afternoon and it is still raining. It was supposed to uh, be backing off and uh, clearing out of here, but it's still going. And uh, I'm pretty sure what I saw last night, we were supposed to get 8 tenths of an inch. And uh, I don't even want to go look at our rain gauge, but I, it's, this has to be closer to 2 inches now inch and a half at least. Um, it's like it's never ending. I think we're about to start working on a door on a dairy barn. I think. Maybe 100%. I don't know what we're doing, really. But uh, we'll just see what we got. Uh, so me and Wes have been working on this office door, or what used to be the office. Um, 
I guess now you would call it like um, maybe a milk prep room, something like that. Uh, the doors that we normally get or the doors that we've gotten in the last few years, uh, we just wear them out to where the opening and closing is so, so much that the hinges just start getting you know shorter and shorter, like eating the hinges off. And then the next thing you know, you open the door one time and the door just falls off the hinges. Um, so we were working on the door and then we had to go to town to get some of those, uh, plastic anchors. You know, you drill a hole, use a hammer drill, drill a hole into the, into the, uh, Haydox blocks or, uh, or into concrete. And then you hammer a little plastic, kind of like a little insert, but it's, uh, an anchor. So you hammer it in there and it sticks in there and then you screw the screw into it and it grips onto the plastic. Uh, so we had to go get some more of them and then, uh, Wes has to go. So I was just going to keep working on it for a little while. It's almost six o'clock now, but uh, I was going to keep working on it and, uh, uh, see what I can get done. There's not a whole lot left, but, uh, I probably won't be able to finish it today, but we'll just see how far we get. Um, so I'll just prop the camera up somewhere and... <laughs> I used to have a desk and a computer, and then I had the, uh, when we had the double eight, we had the Metrons, uh, so then the cables came in, hooked in the computer, so we get the milk weights, and then, um, what are they, Westphalia Metron 12, something like that, uh, milk meters, anyway, so this used to be the old office, uh, used to have a computer in here with all the cow records. And then eventually I got moved over there for internet and all that kind of thing. And then desk ended up coming out. Now we got a storage cabinet in here with uh, you know, well, we keep rubber gloves in here, but the, any extra parts and stuff that we need, uh, foam filters, gaskets. Um, You know, gaskets, uh, switches for the switches for the stalls. There's milk pump seal kit. There's several of them. That's for the top of the detached tube. Parts of claws, milking claws. More gaskets. That actually goes on the um, um, on the shutoff bowl that goes on, and then the air tube goes inside of it. Uh, got contactors. Vacuum pump oil. Air tubes on the inflations, air tubes, extra ones. Pulsators. Pulsator kits. More pulsator kits. Uh, that's stuff for the detacher tubes. Flappers, trailer gaskets, the caps on the on the detachers. Uh, every now and then, the ropes cut through the plastic, and then so we have to replace these every now and then. I'm pretty sure that's a board. That's for the, uh, I don't know what you want to actually call them, the control, control panels for the start and stop on the milkers, automatic milkers, uh, clamps, extra hydraulic hoses for the stalls.
anything breaks down, we'll, we can get on it real quick. Uh, we got most everything that we need in, in here. There's actually a, a, a backup milk pump sitting over there at, uh, behind Wes's house in that shop ready to go. All we'd have to do is grab it, take the old one out, take the plate off, bolt it on and put it on. We could probably have it done in 20 minutes if we had to. So uh, just got everything prepared. But then we just got washer and dryer to wash the rag, or well, yeah, wash the rags. These are the rags that we're using now. Same ones as the blue ones that we used to use. These are just pink. Thought if we got pink, uh, people wouldn't carry them off. You know, they'd be embarrassed to have a pink rag, but I think they get carried off more now. You know, people sticking them in their pocket and taking them home with them. Uh, yeah. So that's what this is. And so we're just gonna start working on this door.
All right, we uh, got our door handle on. Uh, just measured from the floor. Got the center here. Mark the center on the door. You're supposed to use that as a template. So I marked the center hole, drilled it out, put it together, put the screws in. I uh, probably need to just make sure they're, they're snug. Yeah. Uh, I put the uh, shock on earlier and may have to make a few more adjustments to it. And let's see what else. I took off, well, you, you got shims that come with it to shim it to the wall for this. So I mean, that's it's a pretty nice snug fit. And it's also kind of using it as like a backing to help uh, hold the door from caving in. You get some people that come up and lean up against the door and they push really hard and it'll cave it in. You kind of have to pry the door open. But, yeah. So we're going to put the windows in. The windows in and put the screen in real quick. Nice. Oh, I gotta get some towels. Sweet. Nice and tight. That's the way I like it. Well, we'll get all our stuff put up and head out of here. So that's what I'm about to do now. So it's just about 10 minutes after 7 now and we got all packed up and uh, we're headed over. I, I'm actually in Wes's truck. I uh, uh, kept it because he's got more tools than I do. And so he took my truck to his house. Um, yeah, I was kind of thinking about it. If you were wanting to watch farming videos and you came across, you know, in that part where putting a door on, I mean, that's sometimes that's part of it. You kind of do a little bit of everything sometimes. Uh, um, you know, from cow stuff to tractor stuff to building stuff to all kinds of different things. So that keeps it interesting, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's something we have to have is airtight doors on um, anything that's attached to the uh, milk room. Um, so we got three doors there, you know, a door going to the outside, a door going into the parlor, and then a door into the what we're going to call the milk prep room. Um, used to be an office so um, yeah that's something that uh, that the state of Texas which I'm, I'm sure it's probably for most dairies you know an airtight door uh, where the milk tank is so um, yeah we end up usually going through at least one set of doors maybe even two sets of doors a year uh, that um, that door, the doors that we used to get were a little more flimsier. Uh, they only had three hinges on them. And what they would do is you had the piece of the frame that goes on the, like the door jam. And then the, the hinges to the door, as you open and close the door every time, it would eat out the, um, or eat the bottom of the hinge off. And so it would just get shorter and shorter and shorter. And then eventually you would open it and it would just come right off the hinges. 
Um, these doors here, they're a little, they were a little more expensive. They're a little more sturdier. I think they have five hinges, and they also have like a washer underneath the hinge. So hopefully they'll last longer, and maybe we can get a whole full year out of them, or maybe even two years. That'd be nice. Um, so, yeah, it quit raining about two hours ago or so. Um, about the time me and Wes went to town, which was, I think it was about 4:30. So, um, yeah, uh, I. Still no sun. It's cloudy. Um, I hope it, you know, it rained from uh, about 7 a.m. till 4 o'clock, I guess. So hopefully that's done with and we uh, don't get any rain for about three weeks and we can dry out some. So, uh, yeah, with that, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.